little chill computer guy. Today we're in uh, we're in Bitwig Studio. We're in two 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 whatever Bitwig Studio is at. Um, I've just been having this just kind of a Bitwig Studio moment. Um, I saw a thing. I forgot about this thing. It's called the Multi Note, and uh, this thing is really uh, very well. It's minimalistic, but it's very powerful. One of those Bitwig just powerhouse devices, and the thing that makes it such a powerhouse is the fact that you can control the velocity of the notes in your chord, which is just, that's that's golden. That's some just serious golden stuff. Now, on these Bitwig devices, what I love about them, you can double click and type in a value. I love that. I mean, the great thing about this right here, it's like, a, it's just basic uh, note counting. You know, one three seven's a minor, a one four seven's a major. Um, and if you study from, let's say you wanna write in minor, I like to write in minor. So if you start on the A and you have no sharps and flats, you're gonna you're gonna count off your chord. That simple. So you know that second note's gonna be a three. Now you can get presets for these. You know this is kind of cool. You know you have all these presets over here. It's a good learning tool, I guess. But I want to build my own because I notice how I write. I write a certain way. I like to do a, do a triad and then pull that last note up. I mean the first yeah the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and instead of the fifth, it's the seventh. It's basically a one three seven. So I can just dial that in. Down down here and so that's just a way I notice myself writing I just notice myself taking a triad moving the bottom the top note up up to the seven basically now um what's great about that let's say you want to add another one like this okay which is another way that sometimes I write, and then I'll take maybe this bottom note out, which I believe is, in, is that inverting the chord? I don't know. Once I find my scale, I'm kind of a madman of ideas as far as chord progression, how you should put together chords. As long as you're within the scale, you can kind of make a mess of it, which I had a couple of tutorials about, you know, taking chords and folding them down. I'll show you that real quick. Um, like I was saying, if you start on the A, let's say you want to write in minor, so you start on the A, there's an A0, you skip all the sharps and flats. No sharps and flats, in other words, no, only the only the light bars on your piano roll. Or So you got A through G, and then you can just basically take this and push it up, and then push that up you know, to the next A, which is way the hell up here. Hopefully you can see this. Okay, so there, I don't know if you saw what I did there, but basically I got I got four octaves worth of A minor. A minor is like, why it's good to write an A minor is you can do it by just looking at the keyboard. It's very similar to C major, uh, but I don't like to write in major. Um, so if you want like the C major effect, but want to write in minor, just do that same thing, but start on the A instead of the C. And, um, but yeah, what's beautiful about this is once you do that, you can hit Control A and push these all to the left. Basically, um, you know, you can pull them way over here. So basically, you're to the left of the start right now, so you can just fold this down. Now you can just paint in chords like crazy. I mean, you can go crazy with chord progressions, and you will not go wrong, you know? You will not go wrong. You know, like you can do a you know a one this is basically a one two three which i don't like that. that's a crappy chord progression we're gonna go one four three yeah you don't want to go to the two yeah you never want to go to the two so let's go one four three which is a pretty normal chord progression or the one five the one four five is very but um basically once you have these all selected you can uh, so you hit that key and it's, oh look at that oh my god and you go the other way yeah, you make it. It's like a sixteenth note chord, right there. You can, you can take this. You'll know, say a sixteenth note chord. Now you can, uh, and this works the same as Ableton as far as lassoing. It will create a very fine, fine line. And then you hit Control D D D. -D. Oh wow! Shift up.
So yeah, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna build a pad. So we got this big, long, long chord progression now. So this is like 40 bars long. So what we've done is we've taken that same like little thing, but we've uh, we've used that, you know, um, we use that double time. Uh, I don't know. We just clicked it till this thing was 40 bars long. So now these are really long notes. Um, but what makes that cool is now you can uh, work on a pad. So let's load up some pads here. We're using the Codex. It's a nice synth. I like this synth. Let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and play this. Oh, look at that DSP. Got a DSP right there. God. What are these? These are, yeah, see, these are three note chords. So, yeah, running three notes through this codex is just breaking it. You know? Yeah, that's freaking fat pad. Let's try fat pad. Let's see what this is. It's even worse, man. Oh, we gotta change the channel. Well, that's pretty sweet. It's got no modulation. No, I don't want to do that. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use, um... We're gonna use an iris too, actually. And um, so we're gonna basically feed this guy into iris too. So we're gonna open iris too, which is pretty all right on DSP. It's a little heavy on DSP, but uh, we're gonna load this guy up. Okay, um, we wanna do some. Uh I mean, conceptually, you have something that you can kind of build around, um, and you're able to do it quick. Um, yeah, the whole kind of uh, reason for this tutorial was this, this uh, the multi-note. Don't forget about the multi-note. I kind of went on a tangent because I've been really digging uh, the abilities of Bitwig, uh, Bitwig Studio. You know, I really have been digging the abilities of this program. Um, you can get in here and uh, slowly build up plugins over time, and there's some that I just absolutely swear by. I mean, uh, a lot of the Waves plugins, like I say, um, I just preach about them all the time because they, they're 29 bucks. Eventually, if you wait, they'll be 29 bucks. Like this Pi compressor, it's the ultimate drum bus. Put it on your drum bus and go up here and go smash, go super smash, close room just click on that and your drum will just fucking light up here i go swearing about it but i paid 29 dollars for it and it's just absolutely priceless to me and it works wonderful in bitwig studio anyway um i've been kind of in uh propeller head reason and i'm just kind of getting sick of that environment for now um i'm also getting sick of the ableton environment i feel like um when i went to Ableton to try to work on music I was missing more stuff from
from Bitwig than I miss from Ableton when I'm working in Bitwig. In other words, I think Bitwig has more things I miss about it than Ableton does. I mean, Ableton has the regroove mixer. I love the groove pool in Ableton, but Ableton to me starts to feel stiff and there's not like the multi note. They might have like a they might have a multi note in there, but I just I just the um there are DSP issues. It does not do as good on DSP as Ableton. Um, and there's there's audio stretching issues. You know, there's some issues with with stretching audio. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not as good as like uh, Propeller Head Reason or uh, or Ableton. You know, Ableton's probably the best time stretch. I think. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say. Reason's got a pretty good time stretch, but Bitwig kind of falls apart if you start to stretch up the audio. So it's a little less liberal as far as working with audio files if you like to stretch stuff. Um, but as far as just uh, coming in here and just building a track, putting in some plugins, and getting just a nice kind of you know I love the arranging when it gets to the arranging point I love the Bitwig Studio when it gets to the arranging with reason I like the fact that everything fits on one screen I like the fact that let's say these are VSTs and I don't want to look at these knobs I can just click down there's my VST right there it's on it's off you know you know there it is it's just that's that's a cool thing um, not only that but it also switches based on you know your channel you know which you gotta set up in the preferences but um, but yeah so I am just you know wanted to talk about Bitwig Studio because I feel like I kind of abandoned the program and um, I don't know I was kind of upset with propeller head reason so I was messing around in Ableton and, uh, and I started missing things from Bitwig Studio so I went back to Bitwig and just started just messing around and I'm like I love this program this program has something that Ableton doesn't granted Ableton has a lot that, that Bitwig doesn't but I found myself missing Bitwig Studio more than I was missing Ableton so that says something right there you know um Oh, I see maybe Bitwig Studio, if it works on its time-stretching algorithm, its DSP issues, which are better. Those have are showing improvement. They're much better than Bitwig 1. Um, and maybe just some sort of a groove pool or regroove mixer. Those three things right there, and I mean, I will never, ever open Ableton again. <laughs> probably next up put maybe a baseline in or something because right now what we have here is we kind of have a mess we have a mess we've done a lot like we've kind of like worked worked kind of the song up into a nice little lather i guess but what we've done is we've kind of created a mess we've created kind of a chaotic fucking environment here and by saying that i don't mean to like put down what we've done i feel like there's um and so really what you're trying to do is you're trying to open a DAW, it doesn't matter what it is, and you're trying to feel inspired to start just throwing crap all over the place, start throwing out filters, start messing with notes, start messing with music theory, but whatever, whatever, whatever 
brings you into a a creative kind of zen where you can at least get the root of a song. I'm not saying finish an entire song, but get something down that is something you can build off of. Here's what you should reach for. You should reach for, you know, um, filters. I really like using filters. To get, the, to get the sound to fit in the track, just use a filter. Use, I mean, you can do a high, low pass filter, I guess, but just the filter's so valuable. A uh, filter freak's unbelievable. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, plugins of all time, you know. Anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up. Uh, tell a friend about the channel. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you want to see. We're going to be in Bitwig Studio for a while working on stuff. And uh, and so, yeah, we'll see you around. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you again.